Hello, everybody. My name is Todd Ronan. I'm joined with Liz Cross. And on the hot seat today, we're going to dial up with a mind probe, Xi Jinping. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see what's going on because apparently uh, what has happened is they've surrounded the island with, you know, 12 warships and 91 jets and this huge military exercise. Um, and is this really necessary? I think so. I'll grab him, uh, and I've got him here. Okay, what would you like to know? Is your plan to attack Taiwan happening within the next 30 days? Ooh, right now, according to your own personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions, on April the 10th, 2023, are you planning to attack Taiwan within the next 30 days? No, but within the year. So as he is thinking right now, okay, and you have to remember our thoughts, feelings, and opinions change all the time, right? What you may think is great today may be terrible tomorrow, but as of right now, as I'm probing him, he's saying within the year. Is he doing this of his own volition or are there top generals telling him to attack Taiwan? No, he's not doing this of his own volition. Um, it's been recommended. Their, their, their belief is that Taiwan is becoming out of control. It's becoming too powerful. And they're having to teach them a lesson. What is that lesson that he wants to teach them? What is the lesson that you want to teach? That we have full power and control and you will not challenge our authority. So is the blockade around Taiwan just to intimidate them at the moment? Is the blockade around Taiwan just to intimidate them at the moment? No, this is full preparation for what they say is to come. What are the countries can't? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, they're not doing it to um, just intimidate and show brute force, right? You know, just flex their muscle. Hey, we're stronger than you. This is an actual military exercise to prepare them to invade Taiwan. Will there be another, will there be other countries helping them invade Taiwan? Ooh, good question. Uh, will there be other countries helping you? No. No, we can do this by ourselves. We don't need anyone else. They also want to sh teach America a lesson. That's what he just said to me. And hopefully this will teach America a lesson, he says. What lesson are you trying to teach America? What lesson are you trying to teach America? That you don't control our country. That we control Taiwan. We control ourselves. We don't need you interfering in our business. This is our problem and our problem to resolve. We don't need you blazing in here telling us how to live and how to behave. How high up in America do you have influencers? They've got spies at every level. They've got loads of spies. That's coming through very clearly to me. Um, do you have spies in government? Yes. Are they Chinese? No. <laughs> They're American. They have spies in our government who are American who are feeding information. Do you have spies in triple letter, ag triple letter agencies? FBI, all over. Yeah, they've got spies in companies. They've got spies. Do you have any in the FBI? None in the FBI. They won't let us in, he said. Um, the CIA? Yeah, he has a couple of spies in the CIA that are feeding information. They pay them very well. 
um, what um, and what information are you looking for? Just the day to day operations, um, what's going on, what they're investigating, uh, you know, who's in power that they're investigating, uh, you know, any kind of information that the Chinese could leak out to the American public and turn the people against the government. Now, that is not the first time we've had this, Ronan. Uh, a few, I don't know how long ago, but I did a video, and maybe it was a couple of years ago, and it was all about Russia and the media and the control. And this is how these nations seem to infiltrate Americans, right? They, they tend to, you know, because they're saying to me, even he's saying to me now, they're so easy to influence. They, they just fall for it every time. So they'll put the news stories out there, right? They, they'll get these, you know, to turn people against their own government. He says, you see stories like that in our country. We control the media. We don't have stories where people are turning against the government. That's how the government loses control of the people. And he's saying to me, this is what we do. So having those spies or informants in these high places, which was an excellent question, Ronan, because it's led us to this information. It, it, they then can generate the media stories to turn people against the US government. Therefore, you know, you can't have a, a cohesive country if everybody is turned against you, right? And they actually, they're looking for the type of information to sink politicians, right? To, to uncover scandals. That's why it's important to have them in these prominent places. Now, what is coming through also is the fact that, you know, um, they don't, there's, he's saying to me, we don't do this in our country. And what is coming through also is that they're they're wanting to split like the U.S. like so the polarization of the you know left wing and right wing and pitting everybody against one another that's really powerful information uh, and they know how to do this and and you cannot go to war and convince your people to go to war with a country like China, like Russia, like these big countries that would actually, you know, give us a run for our money, right? And in, in a lot of ways, you can't do that if your people are pitted against you and you have a lot of anti-war sentiment. Why? Because you don't trust your government. Why? Because the stories are leaked out, right? So th you see how this works? It's like psychological warfare. You've had a lot of meetings with Vladimir Putin lately. What is the goal behind those meetings? What's the primary goal behind the most recent meeting? Ooh, what's the primary? Somebody asked that on the Discord. Um, what's the primary goal with these meetings? To stick together. To stick together. Um, are you still trying to convince Russia to do a pre peace deal or a peace deal with the Ukraine? I mean, it's been recommended, but he's saying to me, President Xi is saying that it's just, it's useless right now. They keep pushing for a peace deal, but that pressure has to come from everybody in the world, right? And he's saying, look around, Liz, look around. I'm like, okay, I'm looking around. What am I supposed to look at? <laughs> but he's saying, why are the other countries not really pressuring the Ukraine and Russia for this peace deal, right? There was some talk of it. They'll, they'll show like, you know, that they're interested. But he says to me, they're actually not that interested. Are they going to provide any military aid to Russia. They already have. But they're interested in more of a peace deal. 
Yes, let's ask why. So, but you're interested more in a peace deal. Are yes. they in- interested in pushing this war further so that America continues to pour more money into this proxy war? Ooh, good question. Are you pushing the war further so that America keeps pouring the money in? No, no, that was a good question. Um, so what is your agenda? Why are you funding Russia and the war from that aspect if you want a peace deal? He said, that's the only way we can talk to Russia. That's the only way we can compromise. That's the only way we can uh, get our foot foot in the door, right? Is, oh yeah, we'll help you out, but you need to listen to us, Okay. Um, Because you can't, he's saying Putin is a very difficult person to influence, to, uh, you know, to maneuver around. And he's very difficult to listen. It's always his way or the highway sort of thing. And um, he's saying very strongly here that the only way you can really penetrate Putin is to offer him something. And that's what exactly what they're doing. So their goal is to provide support for Putin by stringing him along, but not actually providing support for Putin. I'm sorry, repeat that question for me. So their goal is to string Vladimir Putin along without actually providing support for Russia. Yes. Yes, that is essentially the goal, right? They have given them money and they have given them money and military equipment and other things that they need. I feel like a lot of like first aid equipment has come from China. Um, I don't feel that the Chinese are funding the Ukrainian side at all. I feel like they're just trying to have an effect. You know, from a Chinese perspective, What is actually going on is the fact that they want the money flowing elsewhere. They don't really want the money flowing into this bottomless pit of spending on a war, right? Because they would prefer that the everyday citizens have the money in their pocket. Why? Why? Are you ready for the answer? Drum roll. Because then you're buying material things. You're buying goods. You're... You're spending on other things that benefits China. China makes just about everything now. In your recent meeting with Macron, what agreements did you come to? Macron, France, Macron, Macron, France. Yeah. What did agreements did you? Well, he was basically saying he was trying to cut a deal with Russia. to to talk about peace. And it's almost as if the world is leaving this up to the Chinese at this point, right? Uh, Putin has now stopped talking to other world leaders. They realize that they're banging their heads against a brick wall, trying to get Putin to, you know, uh, to make a deal or to lessen the effects of the war. Uh, to call up a peace treaty. So everybody seems to be at a stalemate at the moment, right? And and they're happy to leave China, you know, up to this job. And this is not an easy job to do. And it looks like the world leaders have just like washed their hands of this, you know, well, okay, whatever. You know, the U.S., what do you think about the U.S. funding the Ukraine? See, actually, China thinks you know, for right now, immediately, it's good. Um, but he's saying, you know, eventually that this all has to stop. And eventually, in his own personal thought, feeling and opinion, not Liz's, I'm probing him, not me, in his own personal thought, feeling and opinion, is that the Ukraine will eventually lose. Let's move ahead a year, March 31st, 2024, and ask if the war against Taiwan was quick and successful. Ooh, okay. So let's, uh, you know what? I'm going to take Taiwan out. 
I'm going to use Taiwan and see what happens with Taiwan. So I'm going to group Taiwan as an entity and I'm going to move them out for a year. So a year from today is April the 10th. So April the 10th, April the 10th, 2024, 2024, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, what would you like to know? Do you still have autonomy? Do you still have autonomy? No. They, they're saying we've never had autonomy. We've always been under the chains of China. Do you, well, let's ask them this. Um, but has anything happened with China in the last year? Yes, there's a lot of things that have happened with China in the last year. And like what, what has actually happened? They've strengthened their hold on Taiwan. Have you had any damage in your infrastructure from ch attacks from China? Aerial attacks. Uh, from your infrastructure for aerial attacks from China. No, no, but definitely there was a show of force. You will comply or else. What's the or else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Well, you know, you get blown to smithereens. Um, and they've had to comply. They've had to make a lot of apologies. You know, we just want to do business. We just want to serve you. I, I just feel like it's very, they're being very compliant. They just want to live their lives and go about their daily business and be a very productive place. What are the top two foreign powers that came to your aid when China attacked? Good question. What were your top two foreign powers that came to your aid when China attacked? Uh, USA is one and Russia. Funnily enough, Russia. Russia then, you know, the tables are turned. Russia then is talking to, you know, China saying, hey, you don't want to do this. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Because they don't want a war there. They don't want that whole area to be under threat of war. I don't know. It has something to do with shipping and receiving. What part of your military remained the strongest? And did you get, you know, foreign aid from the U.S. and Russia? Uh, did you get foreign aid from the U.S. and Russia? No, they just got verbal words of support. What part of your military remain the strongest? I mean, they're saying our military is Chinese. So I just feel like they've given more power over to China. You know, they have succumbed to... The, the threat, right? They don't want a war. They, they want to live in peace. And uh, they have really basically said, well, you know, we'll do whatever you want us to do. They're not going to take a stand against China. They're not going to do it. Well, thank you, Taiwan. We wish you success in your upcoming war with Global yeah, superpower really. China and President Xi Jinping. Do they, what are they, what are their, I guess, the Taiwanese president, what is his sentiment towards Xi Jinping in 2024? How does he feel about the Chinese president and can what he's done in the last year? Sorry, Ronan. Can you bring him up on the screen for me? Let's um, see. I want to probe him. There you go. I don't know Tanya. if this will still be him or not in 2020. Well, we can take. Is that? That's uh, she resigned. Uh, who's the new president? I don't know who it is anymore. That's okay. <laughs> I'll grab. I'll grab the leadership of Taiwan. Okay, I'm just going to grab the leadership. Okay, I've got the leadership of Taiwan. It's actually uh, like the cabinet. The the you know, there's a group of them. I don't think she has any real power. So well. All right. So. What do you think about China? They're scared. Okay. They, they're scared. Um, what do you think about this surrounding of, of the island and, and, and showing, you know, planes and 
ships, warships. It's very frightening. They're trying to not instill fear within the population. And they're saying, oh, don't worry. It's just a military exercise. You know, nothing to be worried about. This is routine. But people are taking notice. And actually, the people at the top of Taiwan, they're, they're scared. And there's no reason to be scared. You can take solace in the fact that it won't be as bad as you think. Right. But, you know, you try telling them that. I mean, you you know, it's like somebody standing outside of your house with a gun. Oh, I'm not going to be scared because, uh, you know, I in the end of the day, I've probed it and nothing's going to happen. No. Are you going to be like that? No way. You're going to react. Right. Um. So. So, yeah. But they're just trying to keep a low profile. They're not trying to react. They're not trying to, uh, you know, push back against that force. They're trying to be very respectful. All right. Thank you very much. It's always great seeing what's coming in the future with Liz Cross. Oh, well, thank you.